As soon as Emmanuel handles that float, you realize that he's a hypnotist and that it transcends the instrument. It doesn't matter what Emmanuel plays, it sounds alive, vibrant, hypnotic, and totally convincing. We first met in the corridor just out there in 2004. This millennium, for sure. You invited me to come on a tour with the ACO. I think there was a French season. Manuel was playing already stolen repertoire of the Franck Sonata for flute and piano. It was sanctioned by the composer that you could mess around with the cello. And then Florida started realizing it could work well. But you know, this attitude towards music, uh, to arrange your favorites into something that you want to do in a new group, to, to enrich it with new colors uh, from an orchestra. This is something that musicians always did. They were stealing ideas and music from each other by enriching each other at the same time. I do believe that every interpretation should be a recomposing. It's okay to open up that score and turn it upside down. It's just something that's, of course, quite challenging for the flute player in terms of breathing, in terms of sustaining notes, keeping the expression, because you string players have infinite bowings, basically. And we have another thing called portamento, which is getting from one note to the other. But when it was written, this was one of the main parts of the expression. It's been lost. So Emmanuel is I'm bringing it to, to the flute. <laughs> well, only you can do that <laughs> and, and, and bring it off. It just feels sometimes like the piano part is a sketch of what is coming out now through this musical uh, string orchestra arrangement. Um, there's a lot of various playing modes, I would say, that, that bring a lot of contrast and, uh, and expression in this music. And that's what we stand for, playing it alive for people of today.